Welcome to the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast powered by Hiscox. I'm your host, Sanjay Parikh. Throughout my career, I've had side hustles, some of which have turned into real businesses. But first and foremost, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. In the creator space, we hear plenty of advice on how to hustle harder and why you can sleep when you're dead. On this show, we ask new questions in hopes of getting new answers. Questions like, how can small businesses work smarter? How do you achieve balance between work and family? How can we redefine success in our businesses so that we don't burn out after year three? Every week, I sit down with business founders at various stages of their side hustle to small business journey. These entrepreneurs are pushing the envelope while keeping their values. Keep listening for conversation, context, and camaraderie. Corey Washington's two startups weren't supposed to be companies. They were personal projects that transformed into official companies at the suggestion of Corey's friends and colleagues. Corey now manages Popa, a clothing brand based in Atlanta, and Rashari, a creative agency serving small businesses. On today's episode, we talk about Corey's commitments, prioritizing perseverance, encouraging fast failure, and listening to your customers. Corey, thanks for coming on the podcast. Excited to have you with us. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Okay, so let's start out. Uh, tell me your background. Like, where are you from? Where were you born and raised? Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, very cool um, place to raise a family. Um, a lot of Midwest values. People are very friendly, overly friendly. <laughs> that's probably where I get it. That's probably why I'm always smiling and, and giddy so much. Um, but I'm the only child. Um, I, I promise I don't have the only child syndrome. <laughs> um, but um, my, fam- my family's great. Very close family. But yeah, originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I went to school at Marion University for undergrad, Indiana Wesleyan for my grad school. I'm a huge bander. <laughs> Um, we, I thoroughly love music, um, especially instrumental music is kind of like my, my happy place, but yeah, Indianapolis is my home, lived in, in, lived in um, Austin, Texas for a while. And then now I live here in Atlanta, Georgia and I love it. Yeah. Oh, oh, what did you go to school for? Uh, the, the two degrees you got there. Yeah. So, uh, Marion, I went to school for marketing and management. The funny thing is, is I, I actually wanted to be a residential architect when I was younger. I was huh. constantly drawing houses. As a matter of fact, I literally have a, a, a doodle over there where I just randomly just drew a house. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I was, I thoroughly enjoyed like residential architecture and like creating beautiful spaces. Um, it was a creativity of it, but I realized very fast, I am not a math person. I hate it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I struggled with it all through school. Um, and I changed my major over to web design for a little bit, but then I really wanted to get in more into the creative and strategy side of it together. And so I changed it to marketing and management. Um, and for grad school, I went to school for strategic management. There was a lot of um, HR people in that program. Yeah. It was, it's really about um, knowing how to work with people, how to, how to lead, um, how to really help drive the business towards transformation um, in regards to be, you know, using, using those people skills in order to really in, um, foster and in, inspire change. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so growing up in Indianapolis, um, did you do anything entrepreneurial as you were growing up? No, or, or just not at all. <laughs> straight up were, were, was a, was a good kid. Went to school, did your things, did no, no entrepreneurial uh, nope. uh, craziness anywhere. Huh? No. No, okay. Just work full time the whole yeah. time. <laughs> family, any entrepreneurs in the family? Yes, my dad actually. Oh, really? Um, okay. M- my mom, um, actually, as I was growing up, my mom um had multiple sclerosis. So I kind of I grew up helping to um and she had it quite quite bad. Um and this this is before a lot of advanced medicine was out. Right. And I grew up learning also how to take care of my mom. So my mom and I, my my, my entire family, my mom and my dad, and I, we were all very close. But I just kind of learned how to take care of her. And so, dad, because he was a captain fireman, he was you know the fireman schedule. They work one day off to work one day off to. Yeah. The days that he was working, I was kind of helping my grandmother take care take care of her. But since he was the main provider of the household, he had a side hustle. He started off by doing like having a carpet cleaning business on the side. 
Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> he sure did. And honestly, I don't think there's ever been a time where I haven't seen him until now. Now he's retired, work like two things at the same time. So the days he's off, he's constantly hustling. So he either had a side business or he worked at the gas company reading meters just for the heck of it to make extra money for just, even though he made great money as a captain. <laughs> so right. He's, he was the one that was the side hustle individual in the family that I really looked up to. Well, I think that explains a lot about where, where you're at right now. And maybe that's where <laughs> you, you got your work uh, ethic and ethos uh, that you've got right now. So, so tell us, um, so right now you, you've got a full-time job. Yes. But you've got not one, but two side hustles. So, so tell us, <laughs> tell us about those. Yeah. So the first one um, that I started was is Popa. And it means perseverance over privilege. And this is a, it's designed and based in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Um, the funny story about that is I literally, this was not supposed to be a brand. I made it for <laughs> me. I literally, okay. this was something that I made for me. It was like a, a words of affirmation. And so I, growing up throughout my, throughout my career, I was kind of the quiet one. I had all these great ideas. I love collaboration. Um, I literally like getting in the weeds, but the companies I worked at before, you have to be there. It was a lot of, it's kind of like the good old boys, popular people make it to the top type of thing. Right. And so I was very quiet. I didn't really force myself into conversations and force myself into different projects and whatnot. I just, just happy, giddy, just loving to work and help people out and, and learn and, and, and create. And so because of which, I didn't get a chance to have a lot of the the experiences and and a lot of times I saw people rise to the top and I'm like how because it's the people they knew it's the it's the, the ways right. they were able to navigate the system um, and get put into those positions and, and you know it kind of sometimes it started to make me feel like wow I don't think I'm ever going to get there I'm too quiet I'm not putting myself out there enough. Um, and a lot of that was on me. And so I said, you know what? I'd much rather get to where I am in my career. I'd much rather heighten my career through that of perseverance and not of privilege. And the AA for Atlanta, of course, we're designed and based in Atlanta, but it really is that's where Atlanta, as soon as I got off the plane, it's like that entrepreneurial spirit, just it's like, woof. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> it, just, it just came out of nowhere because I was not used to seeing so many, especially so many African-Americans of, of, of high influence. Never in my life have I not seen. I have never seen that. Um, I saw managers, directors, so many entrepreneurs, people who are just, they're making their dreams come alive. And that's what really inspired an all in one space. And that's really what inspired me. So I created this shirt just for me. Um, and someone saw it. They asked me about it. And it's funny, it's like how our brand allows people to connect with each other and yeah. how you're able to, it's a conversation starter that allows you to have really meaningful and thoughtful conversations and really learn that other people are not so far removed from like what you have dealt with as you, as you've kind of rose up in your career. Right. And so it really kind of helps men. Um, and also it helps connect people. Um, so that's Popa Rashari. And then, oh, and so yes. And so someone said, you should do something with that. I'm like, oh yeah. shoot. So, so you made you made like one shirt yep. for yourself. Yep. And then uh, basically you got forced into making a company because other people were like, hey, <laughs> I, I want that too. It so, was actually a collection of some other stuff I was doing for the longest time. <laughs> really? Yeah. So so how did I so okay, I can understand how you make one shirt. How do you make that leap? To be like, okay, now I'm going to actually manufacture a lot more than just one. Like, oh, man. <laughs> how did you figure that out? Because that, that's that's a different beast altogether, right? It sure is. <laughs> now, I've always loved fashion. Um, I've always um, really been into kind of like that, um, how do you create a brand that is has purpose, has meaning that people connect with? Um, how do you find the right materials and the product that better reflects the people that you're that you're creating for, um, how do you make sure that it's something that's long lasting? So it goes along with the quality, but that leap was quite difficult. It took me for, it at least took me about a, a few years, like three years in order to really, well, about two and a half or so. No, it wasn't quite three, two, two and a half years or so to really 
get my head wrapped around the process of supply chain and, and, uh-huh. and, um, and materials. Actually, this is actually really funny. When I was trying to select materials uh-huh. to make Popa, I, in my head, I was like, I know that our persona will be, will consist of people who are creators. They're professionals, they're entrepreneurs, they're, they're college students, they're people who are, who are doing something in order to make their dreams come alive. They're paving their way. So these people are going to what some type of quality. They're going to be a little bougie. <laughs> so I would literally, I would, it, it took me a lot of money too. I would go and I'll purchase stuff uh, from different vendors and I will take this bag of, of, of shirts and sweaters and whatever. And the people probably thought I was crazy. I would go to Bloomingdale's and I would feel like these brands have been around for a long time. They have a lot of hype. They have, they already they have a place in the market and feel what their material feels like and what it, and what, and, and, and like how it feels like when you put it on, how it stretches. And I would take my bag of stuff <laughs> and I would literally compare to make sure, are we close to the same? But how can we be better? I will then take those things, bring them home, and I'll put them through numerous wash tests to make sure they will stand up. Because in the beginning, my goal was to ensure that our our, our materials, our garments were of, of utmost, utmost quality in the beginning. Yeah. So you said you, you bought all these materials. So what was your startup cost to, to kind of get this going? Oh, my goodness. I think... All together, for when it comes to the domains, really cheap website stuff. I know how to build my own websites. So that made that labor cost much, much smaller. Um, right. All stuff that we used to power the back end of Ashari and materials, I was pretty much all in around five thousand. So five thousand dollars for all the materials for Popa to to like figure out how to get going. Yep, materials, branding, um, technology, and, and, and on the back end, which was probably our least cost. Yeah. Um, um, uh, marketing materials for when we do go to um, different pop-ups or whatever, yeah. having that around. Yeah. A yeah. lot of stuff costs a lot, but also because I really want quality in those things as well too. Yeah. So, okay. So you, so you launched this line. Um, how did you get the word out? How did you, how did customers find you or how did you find your first customer? Like how did that <laughs> all work? You know, that's something we are still right now trying to, I, I'll admit, I hate to do, need to do better. Yeah, yeah. So the fact is, Popa's customer base is really by word of mouth mainly. Okay. Um, which, and, and we're doing well from word of mouth. Um, um, also, it's from being on in, physically in front of people at different pop-ups. Um, we have gotten to a point, the funny thing is, is as of late last year, um, we have started doing more soft launches to more aggressive launches. And this year we're going full out. Okay. And so the goal was, and I, I was, I have to admit, I was moving very slow because I wanted to make sure I didn't scale up too fast. Like I've seen many brands do. Yeah. Um, especially some brands based in Atlanta. Sometimes they, they scale so fast. All of a sudden it's like, you got all this stuff you don't know what to do with and your supply chain's a mess. <laughs> People are on your Instagram saying, where's my shipment? Where's my order? I'm right. a I'm a techie at, at the same time too. So I was also looking at how do I automate a lot of the business processes that we have in the back end to make sure that we have a seamless customer experience. And I'm happy to say that right now, and especially in this year, we are going to scale up fast. We have great ad serving tools that's going to really help us with that, those capabilities. And we're ready to roll. Yeah. So, um, okay. So as, as if that wasn't enough, so maybe because of, of COVID hitting, uh, you decided to start up another one. Uh, you've got Rashari as well. So yeah. tell us about that. Now, the funny thing, Rashari was not supposed to be a, be a company either. It's just funny how these things start. <laughs> it's because people are like, you should do this. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but um, I thoroughly enjoy, this is the tech geek inside of me. But I th- I'm, I'm very left brain, right brain. I am creative, but I'm also, I like getting into weeds. I'm very analytical. And, and, and really like to dig deep into the tech. Um, I always love making no code experiences, whether that being uh, with automation, chats. I love, because I was a web design major first. Um, and so I love building no code websites for people um, and mainly doing it for myself. The whole Popa site is, is made by me um, on a Shopify platform. And so... And I would do it randomly for other people. And someone, um, my my friend and, and former colleague Kim Kim um, Kim Williams, he said, "You know what? You should do this for other people. You should do this on the side." 
Um, and me and I'm like, I have tons of student loans. <laughs> I am that percent. Um, I'm like, you know what? This will actually, okay, I'll, I'll do it. Why not? I'll try it. And but I said, you know what? Just like Popa, I want to make sure this business has purpose. I'm not just doing it to make a check. I'm not just doing it because I know it's, it's not going to be a get rich thing for me. I want to make sure I'm doing it because I'm doing it with reason and with intention. And right. I'm doing it to help other people in one way, shape, or form. So while planning Rashari, and Rashari means Richard and Sherry put together. That's my mom and dad's name. Oh, nice. Because they're the ones that inspired my creativity, inspired kind of like my philanthropic <laughs> intentions. Um always really ingra- they ingrained in me to make sure um, that everything that we do, we're helping other people in one, shape, one way, shape, or form. We're touching other people throughout our um, lives with our skill sets. And so um, I started, started with Shari with the purpose of helping small businesses create dynamic digital experiences that help connect brands better with customers. Um, and since, so the LLC was established in June or July of 2020, we have had 14 clients since. Okay. We had clients before our website was up. <laughs> and So that's yeah. interesting. So how did you have clients before there was a way to find you? Word so of mouth. Word of mouth again. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And also me seeking out, there's, there's, um, there's someone who, whose job was impacted by COVID and we want to give back to her free of charge. Yeah. And doing things like that, that meant so much. It felt so good. And and honestly, the word of mouth um, and, and and my friend Kim really helping me with building our pipeline. She was kind of like my salesperson and, and uh, <laughs> unspoken salesperson at the time. But um, we're to the point now that we're we're doing um, we're, we're getting people from just our own marketing efforts, just from our website and also reaching out to other folks. Yeah. So it's interesting um, because you're describing Rashari. Uh, that you've got marketing efforts there, but with Popa you don't. So there, <laughs> so there's like this. Paid for those. Re- uh, Popa is still like completely paid for by me. Um, and even with my resources with Rishari, I have to pay them so for for everything that we do, obviously. So if I have so me paying for that plus Popa, I just need to get to the point. My my partner says you're 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 so you're too overly frugal. <laughs> <laughs> You're overly frugal. He's like, you know, you can just pay them to do that. And I, I have to admit, I'm getting better. Yeah, I slowly start doing it because everything. I'm so used to doing everything, everything by myself. But I will, I will admit, one of the biggest reasons that is, it was been, it's been hard um, until now to let people into Popa. It really opens um, my vulnerability up because of what Popa means. Yeah. When I let yeah. people into Popa, on the inside. That touches a very personal side of me that is like, I hope that when you're working on this, yes, I can easily go out and hire people to do designs, to, to, to help out with the marketing efforts, but I really want those individuals to really feel the right. brand, really right. believe in the brand to really make it come to life even more. Is, is it, are you, do you feel like you're worried about control as well? Is that, is that one of your concerns? The funny thing, honestly... If you would ask me that question about three years ago about control, yes. <laughs> um, now, no. Really? Now okay. we're near. I um, And a mixture of that has been things I've learned to just let go. Yeah. Um, because I've had I've just gotten so used to my career, things being taken away. Yeah. That's um, interesting so I because I, the reason go. I ask is, is that that is a, a common issue with entrepreneurs. Um, and that that feeling of of losing control over yeah. the thing that you created, um, so it, it's a pretty common thing. And it's interesting that you've gotten over that hump. Um, yes, and feel very like, quickly. Yeah, I feel like that's not the issue, and, and the issue is is that it's 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 a little bit more personal than that. Mm-hmm. Um, so how 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 are you going to get over that hump of of? Oh, I'm know, over it. Pulling <laughs> uh, pulling people in. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so what we're gonna do? Um, we're gonna we're gonna start do, um, doing internships um, to get people in, but making sure that during the during the interview cycle for the internships, really listening for people that have their own story. Matter of fact, not doing the typical interview for those folks. Really, first getting to know them, who they are, what they stand for, what they want to do in in their life, their community. Because really, it starts off with that 
do you resonate with the brand and do you, do you have a, do you have a, are you, are you touched by it just as much as I am and other people like our customers mainly? Do you feel what our customers feel when they put on these shirts? Because it really is for them, it's, it's like a, it is a movement for them completely. When they put it on, it's a personal reminder. Do you feel the same? Because if, if, if they meet those, those base requirements, anybody, there's many people that have the skills to really take it, take it and launch it and, and, and even further than what it is today. But do you feel what also the brand is trying to put out there is the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. So if, if one of our listeners is uh, thinking about launching a, a fashion line, a clothing line, something like what you've done, um, what advice would you give them? Like, what, what have you learned along the way that oh, you wish man. like, Oh, I wish I'd known this before. <laughs> or I wish somebody had told me this and, and oh. let's, let's figure out a way to help somebody that might be listening and make their path a little easier. So what advice do you have for us, Corey? Um, there's a few different things. Always stay true to yourself. Know your why, um, stay, stay very focused on your why, um, ne- and, and also from a personal level, know where you came from. Always know that you're going to be looking backwards to look forwards. Um, don't try to be like anybody else. Really stay true to who you are and what you want the brand to be. Um, be patient. <laughs> Being an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. There's going to be days you're going to feel, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. There's going to be <laughs> days where you're going to be like, oh, this is great. It's almost it's it's such an emotional roller coaster being an yeah. entrepreneur. But be and, patient. And what do you what do you do when you're you're in those kind of those valleys? Like, how, how do you deal with them? Um, man, I think I think in, in, in my mind, I came into it knowing I will have those peaks and valleys, especially after talking to my family, especially my dad. See, see, having people around you that are also going through the same up and up and down ebbs and flows, um, you automatically know kind of what to expect and you know who to talk to whenever you feel a certain type of way in that moment. Um, so it's a good support system. Um, but also um, kind of, go, but the biggest piece is going into annoying that this will not be, set your mind up for success in the beginning. Just know that this will be a rough road but a very rewarding road, but also listen to your customers. Oh my goodness. Customers are at the center at all times. These are the people who your brand is supposed are supposed to inspire, um, to really make them feel comfortable and make them get through, help them get to those peaks and valleys and those ups and downs. Listen to your customers about what they want and kind of what they feel will be a great next step for the brand. Um, make strategic decisions that are scalable. It's, uh, I, I personally make sure that I, I have, a, I don't um, do well at making decisions that just affect now. Sometimes I have to, um, but a lot of times I make decisions about how can it, what it, how can these decisions be scalable? How can they grow and how do they imp- impact the future of the, of the business? Um, so always going into it with the uh, mind of the, for, for the future. And lastly, fail fast. It's okay. <laughs> Feel fast, be like, oh, that sucked. <laughs> Get up, dust it off, and then, and, and then keep going. Just know you're going to have those days of failures, but, but failure is kind of like the start of success. It, 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 is, it is literally the start of success in every single, yeah. every single well, way. What's, so, what's the last failure that you had with Popa, and, and what did it lead to afterwards? Oh, my goodness. The funny thing is, is it was the brand that Popa and Popa was the collection. I literally hired this random company to do a bunch of ads for me when I was before, because before Pope, I was doing a bunch of drop ship with AliExpress. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was curating specific stuff that I, that, um, I was very specific of, of, of through AliExpress as my start. And um, I hired this company because I said, oh yeah, we're going to grow your revenue and make it hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> And I get, I literally gave them fourteen thousand of my four hundred one k to do an ad, do ads. I lost every bit of it, and what really came down to it is my content was terrible. Yeah, they were doing ads that looked like it was mediocre. Um, the the copy was not resonating to the audience. The pictures were subpar. I need to make sure that the imagery and even videos 
truly reflected the brand, reflect, reflected the, the brand, but also I needed to put myself out there more. People wanted to understand how was this built? Who built this and why? Right. They wanted right. to have that connection. Having a picture with a bag plastered all over it would not establish a connection with people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you make that connection with people, not with things, right? Yes. Uh, Humanizing so, so, the brand. Exactly. <laughs> so w- w- what did that teach you? Like, did you realize like, okay, outsourcing ad buys is not the way for me? Was, was that the lesson or what was the lesson? Outsourcing can be good as long as you have a clear strategy and a, a, an exceptional content across all funnels. So making sure that the content resonates um, very well with your audience and making sure you provide them an experience. And I should have known better than this. When I was at, when I was at marketing cl- a Salesforce Marketing Cloud, before, formerly Exact Target, um, one of the clients that we had was Burberry. And they, were, they chose Salesforce as a, as a way to kind of really catapult or in a, in a way fix their digital presence. Hmm. Angela Ernst at the time, who was the CEO of Burberry, really did a great job at showing us how bringing people into the brand via video and personalized experiences establishes stronger, deeper connections. Um, and I, I honestly, it's like, Corey, <laughs> this is what you, you, you loved seeing that. Like, why didn't you do that? And so really, it re- that was one of those things that said, it was one of those things, even through my career, it's like, I know what I have to do. I'm so quiet. And so like, I don't know if it's going to be the right thing. It's like, just do it, man. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. it, just, you know, well, this, do it. Well, why, why do you think you made that decision of, of not putting yourself out there? You knew it. You just didn't do it. Like, was it, was it, that thing, like you, you're, you feel like I didn't want to be the face of it or like, what, what was the, what was the thought process there? You know, that when I was younger, I, um, dealt a lot with anxiety, depression, and ADHD. And so after my mom passed away, when I was, um, probably about 14, 15, um, it really, I've always had this, um, pressure, put this pressure on myself to, to help make sure I'm there to help take care of my mom, to, um, to make sure that I'm being the best I can be um, on top of the fact coming out as a gay man, there was a lot going on um, during that time. <laughs> and so I, my anxiety levels went. Yeah. And so, um, and, and even through school, I constantly um, was bullied when I was a little kid. And, and, and so it really, that, that I started forming anxiety um, at the longest time, and, I, and, I, and it got to the point where it was affecting my confidence. I was afraid to put myself out there. I was so yeah. terrified to put myself out there. I was afraid of rejection, of, of fear of like, I'm going to fail again at something because my mom passed away. For some strange reason, I put it on myself as if I wasn't there enough, and yada, yada, yada. And so I built this bubble of like, try of protection to keep myself in it and not go out of it. And so it is something I battled with for the longest time. A lot of people deal with this, especially who um, um, who who are who are start off when they're younger, depending upon what happens in their life and school and what and, and family. And so um, it took me a while to get over that, and that's what really kind of put me. I constantly noticed I was putting myself in this bubble of protection yeah. to not put myself out there, not be vulnerable. And I got to the point; I, it got so much easier to put myself out there and bring my ideas to life. Yeah. And not care so much about if something was to go wrong or right or whatever, just do it. Yeah. Because it, maybe it's that uh, you've learned that, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Right? What's the worst that can happen? You, you just do the next thing. Right? Yeah. And the next thing after that. Um, yeah. That, I think that fear of failure, what you're, you're talking about there is, is probably one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people don't make that jump into entrepreneurship. Um, yeah. So it's great that you've recognized this of yourself and, and realized like, Exactly that. You know, when I, the same thing was true for me when I quit my first job and started my first company, I thought, what's the worst that's going to happen? It's going to fail. I'm going to have to go get another job. Yeah. I, it's not that bad. I mean, yeah. it, it'll all be fine at the end of the day. So exactly. Listen, Corey, um, this has been absolutely phenomenal conversation. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, let our Thanks, listeners bro. know where they can find uh, your products and, and find you if they want to find you online. Yeah, so you can find our products at wearpopa.com and it's spelled W E A R P O P A.com. Um, you can also find our digital 
um, company, our digital site at rishari.com, R-I-S-H-A-R-I.com. If you want to reach out to me directly, um, Rishari is the company that kind of owns every, all my side businesses. So it's, it's kind of like the mother, it's the mothership. And so my email is Corey, C-O-R-E-Y dot Washington at Rishari.com. Awesome. Thanks for coming on, Corey. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Senator. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast, powered by Hiscox. To learn more about how Hiscox can help protect your small business through intelligent insurance solutions, visit hiscox.com. That's H-I-S-C-O-X dot com. And if you have a story you want to hear on this podcast, please visit hiscox.com slash share your story. I'm your host, Sanjay Parikh. You can find me on Twitter at, at Sanjay, that's S-A-N-J-A-Y, or on my website at sanjayparikh.com.